Welcome to the Regional Health Report. I'm Ann Krebs. This monthly program highlights the world-class health care we provide to you at each of our Regional Health Command Atlantic Medical Facilities, Dental Clinics, and Public Health Units. The Warrior Games are one way our wounded, ill, and injured soldiers recover through adaptive sports. Eleven athletes from our region earned a trip to Chicago for this year's Games. Dan Ashley talked to some medal winners about the Warrior Games experience. The freedom of moving, of moving without limitations, uh, that's, a, that's one of my favorite feelings and I've discovered that again in cycling. The Warrior Games were in Chicago this year. Uh, it's, it's a competition between all the branches of service, the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, the Marines, Air Force, and then we had two international teams, one from Britain and one uh, from Australia. Warriors, let the games begin! These are the individuals that you want on your team because they bring the skill set and they've negotiated um, some of the most extreme, toughest adversity that anyone can imagine and they've thrived. I'm never going to be able to run again, so that was, a, that was a big challenge for me. I've always been able to do everything standing up, and now you put me in a, in a chair. The mental aspect was a huge, huge challenge for me, and um, being able to overcome that through this um, whole Warrior Games was a, a huge thing for me. I'm my biggest enemy. I doubt myself a lot, and I was extremely nervous to start my first competition, thinking, you know, what am I doing with all these athletes? But then I realized that, no, you, you actually do have what, what it takes to be an athlete. To try to take my mind off being ill all the time, I got into adaptive conditioning. I was taking my medication, started putting on a lot of weight, uh, and so tried to increase the amount of adaptive conditioning I did to counteract all the weight gain. It took me a minute to get into adaptive sports only because I was so in denial about everything. When I found adaptive sports, it was like a new outlet for me. and. Being back part of a team that I thought I would never be able to do again, like it meant everything to me. They still want to compete. They still are competitors at heart. And so this was a way, a natural outlet for them to compete on the fields of friendly strife and demonstrate um, some of their abilities uh, in front of a large audience. The Army is all about competition. I mean, you, you work as a team, but you're you're always working to get better. You're working to make yourself better and you're working to make your team better. And my events are archery, cycling, and swimming. I love basketball. I played basketball all my life. When I tried out for the team in 2015, I didn't make the team. And I knew right there I had to train a lot harder. Um, participating in air rifles, seated volleyball, wheelchair basketball, hand cycling. Um, seated shot put in discus. There are ways to come out and be part of a team and be part of a sport. It makes a world of difference. You don't feel alone. I don't have to lock myself up in my room by myself and uh, lick my wounds. You know, I'm, I'm out there fighting my battles with other people supporting me. I participated in swimming. There were three events and cycling. You go to this type of event because you want to support your soldiers and so you go there you want to provide them some some support, you think you're going to go in there and boost their morale, you end up walking away realizing that they motivated you about a thousand percent more than you motivated them. Um, this year was my, my first year um, competing in the Warrior Games, so I mean it, I had a lot of fun, uh, a lot of new experiences. Um, for seated volleyball, we made it to the gold medal rounds. Um, we actually ended up taking silver against the Navy, and then um, for uh, wheelchair basketball, we actually got to take the gold against the Navy, so we kind of got our comeback and got the gold. Um, for uh, hand cycling, I ended up taking fourth, which was a, a fun event. Um, really hot out there for, for that event, but it was a, a good time. Um, and then for seated uh, shot putt, I ended up taking um, silver, and then for um, the discus, I uh, took bronze. So it was not too bad for my first, first go around for the Warrior Games. Rather it's adaptive sports or not, you know, you push yourself and do, you do what you want to do. Um, you don't let your injuries define you, you define your injuries. You never know what you're good at unless you try it. I received three gold medals, one silver, one bronze. So I ended up with a gold, two silvers, and two bronze, all in swimming. Everyone was, you know, oh! calling my name and cheering me yeah. on, and I couldn't see faces, I could just hear people. I was like, are these people calling for me? It was very strange. Same thing in the pool. You can actually hear while you're swimming 
So I could hear like, go Carla, go Carla, and that, you know, that was motivating me to keep fighting and stay strong. Uh, I got a gold in cycling, which was a great honor for me, and bronze for two swimming events. You know, last year's games that were held at the United States Military Academy at West Point were a huge success. The games this year at Chicago were a huge success. And I think everybody's excited to head out west now and go uh, participate in these games at the Air Force Academy. Uh, yes, I'm pretty proud. <laughs> yes, um, and I can't wait to go next year and do better. I always go Army. We got this. We got to repeat again next year. We're going to Air Force Base, so Colorado Springs, here we go. During war and peace, combat medics take care of their fellow soldiers. Recently, the Army Surgeon General provided guidance to help medics enhance their skills. The Enhanced Medic program pairs medics with nurses. The 10-week program trains confident, knowledgeable medics capable of being a primary caregiver. Nurses in the Womack Emergency Department work with medics to pass on skills that enable medics to operate as independently as possible. The goal is that by the end of their time with us in this program that they can go out there, be assigned to a nurse, and they work. Um, they'll be able to take a, a bed, one to two bed assignment with that nurse, with the nursing oversight, but be the primary caregiver of that, of that bed in the emergency department. Students in this program learn to look at the healthcare tasks they perform every day in a different way. They move beyond technique into the realm of science, from the how to the why. What's amazing is when you see them get that light. When they have, we've been asking them to do these, what we say tasks, to start an IV and draw blood, which they're all good at doing. But do they understand the pathophysiology behind it and what lab values are we looking at for a patient with you know, a heart attack labs that we're looking at. And when they actually get to see it and understand it, and it makes them really, the quotes that they've given me is, I love coming to work now. We had a patient come in and I set them up on the monitor. They came in through EMS, so I didn't quite know what was wrong with them. But I looked at it and I recognized and I said, that's AFib. And I took it to the doctor and they were like, you know what this is? And it was AFib. <laughs> so um, for sure, I think that was the one of the probably one of the best moments for me where I was like, oh, I'm so glad that I'm in this because I felt at that moment, I got this, I can do this, I can learn it. And that was definitely a big, big moment for me. The second group of enhanced medics completed the program in June. Future plans call for training medics in other departments. Reporting for the Regional Health Report, I'm Samaria Zavala. And finally, as summer continues to heat up, we want to remind you that your pets and military working dogs are vulnerable to heat injuries just like their two-legged companions. Make sure your pets have access to shelter, shade, and water. Military working dogs are trained to work in harsh environments, and their handlers keep them safe by monitoring their temperature during the hot days. That's the Regional Health Report for August. Join us next month for another show highlighting health care across the region. In the meantime, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. We're also on the Army Medicine channel of the Defense TV app. Thanks for joining us.